Don't do much good. Six guns useless at this range, and I know it. Probably a couple of scavengers after our horses and gear. I haven't got them yet. Ah, but they're coming. I figure one of us is done. That puts the odds in their favor. Sounds like they drew a crowd, Mr. Neal. Make every shot count, boy. Sure. Oh! Are you all right? Oh, we are now, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Burton out of Fort Stanley. Are you badly hurt, sir? Well, it could have been worse if you hadn't shown up. Chris Hale, wagon master. This is Duke Shannon. Gentlemen. Medical orderly up here on a double. Gentlemen, I... Uh... Uh, Lieutenant Burton. If you'll take care of Mr. Hale here, I'd like to catch me a couple of bushwhackers. Well, that, uh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Shannon. Did you get him, Lieutenant? Well, no, sir. No, sir, I didn't. You see, we've been after two deserters, and I'm afraid that two of my men mistook you for them. You mean we look like the deserters? Well, no, sir, you don't. But we've been tracking for over a week now, and I'm afraid my men are getting a little bit edgy, sir. Oh. I can start making amends by offering you gentlemen some lunch. Two spineless cowards desert my platoon. He's got to have company for lunch. I'd like to take that, Wes. Help it cause us a lot of trouble. Dismount. Sergeant, break out the noon ration. Mr. Hale. Maitland's 19, Timkins is 20. Hmm. Left a couple of kids, huh? There's no special age for being a coward, Mr. Hale. For a military court to determine cowardice, Sergeant, not for you and me. In my book of soldiering, a man who runs away is a coward. Aren't you interested in finding out why these lads ran, Sergeant? They ran away because they were gutless. Because they thought the Army was one big parade in brass buttons. Because they couldn't stand up to the discipline that turns a fleshy civilian into a soldier. Were they in your platoon? Yes, Mr. Hale. It's the first time anyone ever deserted on me. You were one of the men who fired on us, weren't you? Well, from where Corporal Rawlins and I were standing, you looked like deserters. You see why I ask you to be careful, Sergeant? We don't want to it's have... It's not my duty to be careful. It's my duty to bring in two deserters, dead or alive. Alive, Sergeant. I made that clear. If the sergeant can mention, the lieutenant forgets that the manual says you can bring in deserters dead or alive. I'm well aware of what the manual says, sergeant. Yes, sir. But the sergeant has had 12 years to know it better, sir. You've mentioned that several times before, sergeant. If the lieutenant feels that I've been derelict in my duty, uh, according to the manual, he can assign me a two-man escort back to Fort Stanley. Does the sergeant have permission to be excused, sir? You're excused. I wear the bars, but he commands. Now, hadn't you noticed, Mr. Hale? Why don't you send him back? Mr. Hale, I came directly from West Point to Fort Stanley exactly two weeks ago. Without Sergeant Kyle, I'd be lost in an hour. Then relieve yourself of command. I can't do that. Maitlands and Timkins wouldn't have a chance of being brought in alive. I just wish I hadn't gotten Kyle's in my very first command. Well, we all get a Sergeant Kyle's in our lives, Lieutenant. We don't get rid of him just by wishing. He'd be up a tree in a minute without me. Yeah, maybe so, but you made him look pretty dumb up on a hail and shine. Don't take much to make him look dumb. Well, he's young. What, have you got sympathy pains for him? No, it ain't that. Well, then close your face and do as you're told. Before I get through with him, he's the one that's going to be sent back. Make one of the right behind him. Dead. <laughs>
Joe. What can I do for you, Miss Lane? I, uh, we, my mother wondered if you'd like to eat with us today. Dan. Uh, I mean, uh, you about done, Joe? Yeah. Uh, Miss Susan. Uh, I gotta talk to you, Joe. Thank you more kindly, Miss Lane. Well, Mr. Wooster's expecting us. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, would you tell your pa that I greased and tightened the wheel like I promised? Joe, are you going to be leaving right soon? Right up to the noon meal. You loco. Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. It's, it's just... Joe. I mean, Joe. Two days on this train with everybody so nice and friendly. Well, I just couldn't forget. That's Susan. She's taken with you, Joe. Yeah, I know it. But it isn't for me, not for her either. And don't you forget so easy anymore. I won't, honest. Just, just remember that Kyle's is out there. And he's not gonna settle with just taking us out to the back of the fort and whipping us, not this time. Not after what we've done to him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, come on, let's eat and then be on our way. You're going to be unhappy to see those two boys go, Flint. Thanks, John. Oh, why is that? Because they eat a stew like it's the only food left in the world. Them like my stew ain't got nothing to do with it, Hawks. If you ask me, they've been mighty handy, working for everything they got, not asking for nothing, and appreciating everything everybody done for them, too. That's more than I can say about a lot of people I know. You wouldn't be mean to me, would you, Charles? Yes, I mean you. Why you e you? Them like my food just goes to show they're smart, don't it, Flint? Well, they're well mannered and they don't talk too much. That could mean they're smart. See that, Smarty? <laughs> and maybe again they're hiding from something. You think they're running away? I don't know. But the way their boots are cut up and their clothes are torn, I'd say they've been traveling mountain trails at night. They might have got hungry and come down on the flat hoping somebody would pick them up. Well, yeah, they don't look like outlaws. No, sir, they don't look like outlaws to me either. I think they got lost just like they said they did. They ain't give us no reason to believe otherwise, have they? Well, you don't have to bite my head off. Well, you wouldn't miss it much. <laughs> oh, here they come now. Howdy, Howdy, boys. Howdy. I bet my stew's gonna taste good after all that hard work you've been doing, huh? This stew tastes awful good any time, Mr. Wooster. Especially after the stuff we've been used to getting. Where was that? When we were punching cattle. That cook could sure use a few lessons from me, Mr. Wooster. Thank you, Captain Brave. And why you fellas left? Bad cooking? Well, that and, and Frank and me, we've been wanting to go to San Francisco anyway. Oh, are you able to get us a couple of horses, Mr. McCullough? Yeah, Mr. Baxter's willing to take your price. Mighty generous of him. I know it's not a fair price, but $40 is almost all we've got. If he didn't think it was a fair price, he wouldn't have taken it. You just go by his wagon and pick him up whenever you're ready. You people have been awful nice to us. Sometimes things happen, you wonder if you'll ever meet nice people again. I just want to tell you that we'll be settling in Oro Valley, and that's not too far from San Francisco. Thank you, Miss Susan. We ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. We'll be leaving now, Mr. McCullough. Oh, did you get your water all right? Yes, we did. Sorry I couldn't give you more, but we're only kind of low ourselves. Mighty grateful for this. Just take it easy. There's not another drop between here and Morgansville. And remember what I said about that ridge. It's hot and it's steep and it's dirty, but you stay on it. We will, and thanks again. Don't mention it. Good luck to you. Bye, boy. So long. See you. Sure nice boy, ain't they? <laughs> Sure. I saw three Indians not two hours ago. And they'll be coming right over that hill and down through this canyon. And they're moseying along like they ain't got a trouble in this world. They didn't have until now. What do you mean, Wes? 
I mean I'm going to give our little boy lieutenant his first taste of soldiering. Check your rifles. Did you hear what I said? Well, you can't just... Disobedience to orders in the field gives me the right to shoot you here on this spot. As the old saying goes, recruiting depots send in boys, sergeants send out men. I'm going to find out just how much man there is in Lieutenant Burton. Carson, you go tell Lieutenant Burton that we found some tracks. Uh, that ought to get him here late. All right, dismount. You too. Get up over on that hill to the right. We're all going to get on that ridge. Thomas, you stay with the horses. Keep them out of sight. When you hear me fire, pour it on. I want them good and dead. Still a two-day ride to your train, Mr. Hale. You sure your arm's up to it? Concerned about my arm, Lieutenant, or your moral support? Well, I'm afraid it's a little of both, sir. I haven't done very well making friends with the men. Well, you have to learn to lead your men first, Lieutenant, before you can make friends with them. You'll have to settle with Sergeant Kyle before you can do that. <laughs> Kyle's may have picked up the trail. Tried to be friendly, but one of them fired a shot at us. Sir. I was going to check to see if they're dead. Now that you're here, that's your duty, Lieutenant. Dead Lieutenant. You enjoy killing, don't you? Only enough to make men like you keep their mouths shut. No. Don't give the sergeant an excuse to shoot you in the line of duty. I don't need a gun to tame this maverick. Sergeant, you still say you were fired on first? Me and four other troopers, Mr. Hale. This rifle hasn't been fired. I didn't say it was a rifle. It was an arrow. It whistled so close to my ear, I could almost read my name on it. It's a pity it didn't come so close you couldn't read it. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Hale. Well, you can save your threats for your troopers, Sergeant. I say these Indians were no more than a peaceful hunting party, and I think you murdered them. You think, Mr. Hale? What do you think the Army's for? We fight to protect your right to think what pleases you. Don't blacken the Army with what you did here today. I'm proud when I see a man worthy to wear that uniform, but you're a disgrace to it. You're not fit to wear it. I'm not fit. Then who is? A lieutenant who can't look at three dead Indians? Are you? I'll put my combat record up against yours any time, and we'll see who's fit to wear it. A 
A fine combat record marks a brave man or a killer, Sergeant. Mr. Hale? Mr. Hale? I'm sorry. An officer's first command usually determines his career, Lieutenant. Sergeant suggests that we've wasted enough time, Lieutenant. Sergeant Kyle's assigned a burial detail. Corporal Rollins, bury the Redskins. Orders carried out, sir. Sergeant Kyle's. Yes, sir. You're a veteran soldier. Twelve years, sir. You know how to be disobedient, insubordinate, without my being able to prove it. You make a fool of me easily. I know you hate me, and that's your privilege. But today, that hate caused the death of three men. They were Indians, sir. They are human beings! You never fought them, I did. That doesn't give you a right to murder them now. Can you prove that it was murder? Sergeant, I, uh, I, know, I know why you did it. But I can't prove it. If I could, I'd strip you of your uniform. When we get to Fort Stanley, we'll see who does the stripping. Are you threatening me, Sergeant? I don't have to threaten. My record speaks for itself. The Sioux, the Cheyenne, the Cook, and Hatfield. With me, McClellan, and Shiloh, and Manassas. Wounded twice. Commissioned. You heard right, Lieutenant. Commissioned. While you were still crawling, I was getting medals from here to here. That don't strip too easily, Lieutenant. You got a lot to learn, Lieutenant. Not from you. From me. You'll learn that the Army isn't all West Point dances. Kids like you and Maitland and Timpkins are worthless without men like me. To make them or break them. Well, they broke and they're going to pay because the Army says so. Oh, if the lieutenant doesn't like it, he can resign his command and take himself back to Fort Stanley. I can send you back, Sergeant. Sure, Lieutenant. But if you do, you stand a lot less chance of bringing back Maitland and Timpkins. That won't do your record any good. We'll pull out just as soon as the men are finished. Yes, sir! The horses are too tired. They'll never make it up that ridge. What's the matter? I'm totter and Billy blazes down. Paul! I can't help it. We're only away from the train a day and you've been going heavy on your water. Well, I can't help it if my throat's burning up. I'm sorry, Danny. Sure. Hey, Danny, let's walk up the valley. It's easier walking. Mr. McCullough said to stay on the ridge. Yeah, I know. And that's been bothering me. Why? Danny, Mr. McCullough ain't the kind of man who'd lie. Kyle's can come across the train. And Mr. McCullough's got to tell him about us. Well, that'll just put Kyle's on us again. We don't know where that goes, if anywhere. Well, it's got to go somewhere. I don't know. It's a big chance. It can't be no worse than Kyle's catching up with us. I guess we don't have much to lose at that. Come on. Yes, sir, I found the trail. A settler gave him some food and water about four days ago and put him on a mountain trail. Very well. Stupid fool civilians. Maitland and Timkins are not wearing uniforms, Sergeant. You can't expect a settler We're to... closing in on them. Can't stand around here all night. Mount your troops. All right, mount up. Come on, let's go, mount. <laughs> Saying he was going to strip me. I was a lieutenant before he had teeth in his mouth. 
Sarge, how come you got busted? I didn't get busted. The wartime commission. In peacetime, it's hard to get it back. You got to stand in line behind a bunch of milk-fed West Pointers. It ain't fair. I'll bet if the war had gone on a little longer, you'd have been a captain. Uh, maybe even a major. your neck if you don't quit chirping like a magpie. What a jelly, Duke. What a jelly. Bingo! Over the fence is out, you know. Ah, might as well try the other one. Go ahead. Throw it over the fence, too. I'll give you another chance. Come on. I'll be obliged to throw the next one. Now, Hawks, get that look out of your eye. Hawks, Bill, Bill. Well, what could put a girl like you doing out here all by yourself? Um, I was just thinking. Room on that yoke for both of us? Something on your mind? Someone on your mind? Silly, isn't it? Acting this way about Joe when I only saw him for two days? Well, sometimes it doesn't take long to find out that you like somebody. But, well, I don't even know his last name, and... He wasn't even very friendly. Maybe he had reasons. But he wasn't married or promised to a girl. His friend told me. I think he wanted to be friendly, but... Oh, I don't know. Ma says it's foolishness acting like this, but... I can't explain it. Susie, nobody can explain how a boy and a girl can meet and fall in love in one minute. But you can't let that one minute be the only one you think about. You think he's done something bad, don't you? I'm not sure. But you must think so, or you wouldn't ask me. No. No, Mr. McCullough, I don't. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Worcester would agree with you. So you go on thinking just the way you do, because who knows, maybe you're both right. All right? Good night. Good night. was on the other one. Sun sweats you dry so you can freeze up at night. Must be a savings. What? What do you got there? Oh, it's just a present from Susan Lane. Why isn't she making a canteen of water? You stop thinking about water all the time. I wish I could, but... Well, my mouth always feels dry like... when you're scared, you know? You shouldn't have taken this trail. Ah, oh, you said that before. You know what I'm going to dream tonight? What? That Kyle's is dead. Dead! Dead! And, and you? Yeah.
up to here, they're headed in a straight line out to the open to get help. How about a year's pay that they got it? Now, two, maybe three days old. We can get to that train by nightfall. But we'll rest before we go on, son. When we've got them in our sights? The men are exhausted, the horses are worn out, and if Maitland and Timkins are so close, an hour won't make any difference. Oh, yes, the sergeant forgot the lieutenant's new to the saddle. May the sergeant remind the lieutenant that the time to rest is not when you have the enemy in your sights. Sergeant, I, uh, I know that as well as you do. Your order is we rest. Yes, sir. Rest it is, sir. Would the lieutenant mention in his report that the sergeant requested permission to go after the deserters alone, sir? Sergeant, you will not go after the deserters alone. We'll continue. After you, sir. <laughs> I kind of figured they were running from something. You better go after them, Flint, and bring them back here. Well, don't you think that's kind of stepping on the Army's toes? Better that than on the graves of those two boys. The way you described this, Sergeant, he sounds like the kind of a man you'd like to hang up by his thumbs. I'd like to have my hands on him. Yes, sir. -y. You grind you into dust, Charlie. Like he's doing with that young lieutenant. It's not hard to see why those two boys deserted. No, it isn't. Well, I turned them loose. I guess it's up to me to go get them. You know, Chris, I don't think too much of this, Lieutenant. Well, he's facing a tough problem, Bill. Let's not judge him until it's finished. Oh. Well, I might as well go make a big pot of coffee. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Hale. Hello, Lieutenant. I didn't expect to see you again. This is my scout, Mr. McCullough, Mr. Hawk. Lieutenant. Evening, gentlemen. You? Well, you don't look like you've been out of the saddle since I saw you the last time. Well, uh, we, we haven't, Mr. Hale. Uh, we found Maitland and Temkin's trail, and it appears they might have been picked up by a passing wagon or a train. We were wondering if any of your people knew anything about them, sir. No need to wonder anymore, Lieutenant. They're here, all right. They're not here, Sergeant. Mr. McCullough was just telling me... Civilians are subject to Army regulations if they aid in a better deserter, Mr. Hale. Where are the scum? Where are they? Sergeant, you let go of that girl. Get away from her, Sergeant. She can tell us. Now, you get back over here where you belong. Yes, sirs. Lieutenant, your men were here. I didn't know who they were. They looked like a couple of kids who needed help, so I gave it to them. I can understand that, Mr. McCullough. Uh, how long have they been gone? Three days. We found some clothes for them. They bought some horses. Uh -huh. Which way? Morgansville. Well, I'm uh, afraid uh, I don't know the territory. Well, that's north over the ridge. Lieutenant, the sergeant requests permission to speak. Yes, sergeant. They could be halfway across by now. With the head start that these people have given them, we should take out after them immediately. Lieutenant, I suggest that the sergeant is too anxious to judge properly. The trail is difficult to pass in the daytime, but at night with a detachment of men, it could be disastrous. It couldn't be that you'd like to see them get clean away, could it? You know, sergeant, you make that sound surprisingly attractive. Lieutenant, if I may suggest. I think it's best we wait till in the morning, sergeant. They'll be out of our reach by then. You, uh... Do you know that trail well, Mr. McCullough? Very well, Lieutenant. We'll leave in the morning. Upon your hospitality, Mr. Hale, my men and horses need food and water badly, sir. Well, the food's no problem, Lieutenant. 
But we've had a long dry spell and we're dangerously low on water. I see. I could let you have a little tonight for drinking purposes. Well, that's very kind of you, sir, but I was thinking about tomorrow. Well, I'm afraid I couldn't let you have that much without jeopardizing my people. Article 14 of the military manual says that the military can confiscate property in time of war or an emergency. This is an emergency. Well, there's another manual, Sergeant, the Bill of Rights. And it says that no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house except by the consent of the owner, nor in time of war except in a manner prescribed by law. These wagons are houses, Sergeant, and I prescribe the law here. I'll discuss the matter with the others. Thank you, sir. Make camp, Sergeant. You know, I think that lieutenant's really got the stuff if you'll just take the time to let it out. Well, that's the tough part of being young, Flint. You never think you have the time. Here, Sergeant, pour it back. I said pour it back, and I won't ask again. Out of my way, mister. Well, this train just lost another scout. Consider it a personal favor. Now, wait. Pour it back, Sergeant. I'm not asking again. I promise you that. It's all my fault. Nobody blames you, Lieutenant. Your accident, those three Indians, all of them. I didn't want to fail my first command, Mr. Hale, so I let Sergeant Kyle's command me. When you have to stand and watch another man fight your battle for you, well, there's no failure greater than that. Good night, sir. Sergeant Kyles. Lieutenant, don't be worrying about these civilians. Sergeant Kyles. You are hereby relieved of your duties as sergeant of this detachment. Corporal Rollins? 
Yes, sir. Till we return to Fort Stanley, you will act as sergeant. Yes, sir. You just try giving me orders, corporal. You just try it. At your disposal till I return, Mr. Hale. All right, Lieutenant. You better help him do his swagging, Charlie. Come on, Frank. I'm liable to be a few days, Mr. Hale. All right, Flint. Don't underestimate Kyle's now. You give him half a chance, he'd kill you. In the line of duty, of course. Mm. Mr. McCullough, would you tell Joe, uh, Danny, that I... Yep. I'll tell him, Susan. Ready, Mr. McCullough? and cowards. We'll have to run forever. That's no life. We'll never be able to marry, settle down. Oh, it's that Susan. That perfume on that handkerchief. It's got your head all empty. Thinking about her made me see it right, Paul. Well, maybe you can forget Kyle's and his ways of making you a soldier. But I can't. We'll tell them about Kyle's. They won't believe us, Danny. Listen, Paul, if we don't go back, then what Kyle says is right. We're nothing but milk-fed, white-livered scum with jelly for a backbone. Paul, I'm not those things. I ain't those things either, Danny. Sergeant Kyle took the wrong trail? No, they took the right one. Maitland and Timpkins that have been through here first. But where would it take them? As far as I know, nowhere. These uh, offshoots lead into Blind Canyon. And Maitland and Timpkins could That's be... That's right. Riding right back into Kyle's hands. Let's go.
it easy, Paul. Stop, kill that thing now. Don't. Yeah, you're getting yourself all riled up over nothing. I'm... I, I'm scared, Danny. About going back to Fort, I mean. I've heard of coyotes getting so hungry that they, they, they attack a man. Maybe it's a, a pack of them. I'm going to build up the fire. <laughs> hey, that's a nice light. Now, there's no chance of missing you, scum. You didn't think old Sergeant Kyles would forget you, did you now? How do you think it would look on my record? If I let two weak-bellied cowards get away from me. We were coming back, Kyle. We were coming back, Sarge. Sergeant, sir! I believe you. That's why I'm here to help you back. We won't give you no trouble. Don't do nothing unless I say so. That's an order. Of course, you two were never very good at taking orders. So it wouldn't surprise me if, say, you started running and I'd have to shoot. No move, either of you. Go ahead, kill us and get it done with. We don't fear you no more, Kyle. That's why we're going back to Fort. We're going to tell them about you. Any last words you'd like me to take back? Then you're a rotten snake. <laughs> for 12 years. You want to know who's going to win? Just take a look at the Bulls record. You'll find out who's going to win. Everybody loses sometimes, Sergeant. Don't try it. You'll never make it. Put it down, Sergeant. Put the rifle down. I won't ask you again. <laughs> Bad he had to end up that way. He was a good soldier once. We probably wouldn't have won the war without men like him. But we're at peace now, Mr. McCullough. That's right, Lieutenant, but the sergeant here couldn't get the battles out of his head. He just couldn't kind of get back in step. Horses are down in the draw, Danny. Bring them up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kyles did more for you than any of us. He was a deadly foe, Lieutenant, but he was a challenge, and no man grows without a challenge. I understand, sir. Good luck to you, Lieutenant. Clint, I'll look forward to seeing you on your next trip through. I'll be looking for you. I'll be here. Good. 
excuse me, oh, Lieutenant. Mr. Wooster, I wouldn't want to leave without uh, thanking you for your most excellent stew. It's all right, but I got something very important to ask you. Well, I know all about Army rules and regulations and things like that. 